So UPI fraud right now is on the rise. I'll talk about specifics with the UPI scams. More than 1.4 lakhs UPI frauds has been reported in the year 2022. Scammers target innocent people on platforms like OLX, Quicker, and many more. Now, if you look at closely, these frauds were possible because of lack of user security awareness. But is there any possibility of UPI system itself getting hacked or compromised? All right, so in this video, we'll talk about UPI system security, possible security issues, and how it is being mitigated. So if you are a security enthusiast, then I'm sure you will enjoy this video. So stay till the end, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do subscribe now. Prime Minister Modi says, UPI is India's identity in the world now. But what is UPI and what makes it different? It is a real-time payment system. It powers you to connect multiple banks in a single app. It is maintained by NPCI, National Payment Corporation of India. Let's look at some history. It was launched in the year 2016 by Dr. Raghuram Rajan, former governor of India, who is currently professor at University of Chicago and sometime founded in India. It was not the first time that India came up with such payment standards or protocol. NFS launched in 2004, NEFT launched in 2005, RTGS was launched in 2004, IMPS, the India's still favorite payment system, launched in 2010, Rupee, the domestic card network, was launched in 2012, BBPS, the Bharat Bill payment system, was launched in 2016. Due to the surge in the mobile penetration, Indian government decided to launch a mobile-based payment system. At the time of making this video, India has around 1.2 billion mobile phone users. And people are really loving it. In December 2022, UPI touched its highest ever mark with 782 crores transaction worth rupees 12.8 lakhs crores. Now let's talk about the architecture of UPI. First is user layer. This can be your Beam UPI app or any third party apps such as PhonePay, Google Pay or Paytm UPI apps as well. Next, we have Bank Layer. This is where we have all the different banks including SDFC Bank, ICSA Bank, SBI Bank, Access Bank, etc. Now the payment wallets and bank infrastructure are collectively called as PSP, which is Payment Service Providers. Finally, we have UPI layer. Now, UPI infrastructure basically works as a centralized database of users and their payment ID, their bank account details, their Aadhaar information, and UPI also perform routing of transactions. Now, there are some important points to note down. Both sender and receiver can be individuals, merchants, or any organizations. Now, to perform transaction through UPI network, you need VPA, that's virtual payment address, or we normally call it as UPI address. NPCI maintains a central repository of all user VPA, name, bank details, Aadhaar, mobile number, etc. NPCI UPI talks to all the banks using API, and these APIs are not openly available. Now, bankers need to get approval from NPCI before integrating it with their mobile applications. UPI acts as a DNS server of internet where it maintains the mapping of VPA of all customers with their respective bank account details. Now, UPI ensures that the payer can send money to the pay without even knowing the actual bank account details. One bank can talk to another bank only through UPI network and this forced them to follow a standard interface and user experience. Now let's talk about possible cyber attacks on UPI system. Now we'll explore the possible security issues based on CIA trial. This stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This model is used globally to ensure security against possible cyber threats. Let's talk about confidentiality. This is about preventing any unauthorized access to the data. If someone says they have 100% score in confidentiality, it simply means that they have no chance of data breaches or disclosure, which is not easy to achieve. 
Attacks such as stolen authentication, man in the middle attacks, code injection attacks can actually impact the confidentiality of UPI system. Let's talk about how does UPI currently handle such attack attempts. Authentication. There are two things that UPI system perform to authenticate user requests. UPI system link the VPA, that's virtual payment address, to their underlying global IDs such as Aadhaar, biometrics, mobile number. Second, UPI system also link the VPA to their respective payment service providers. Authorization. Now, once authenticated, UPI forward the request to their PSP so that they can authorize the transactions. Restrict access. Now, UPI don't share the APIs on the public network. They share the APIs only after proper documentations. There are some more security controls such as encryption, continuous monitoring, endpoint device locking, etc. Now this helps UPI to achieve maximum level of confidentiality. Integrity. Now this is about preventing any unauthorized modification of data. Now integrity of UPI system can be compromised if attacker bypass the detection system of NPCI network and change or maybe delete the data. Internal employee accidentally delete any UPI data or configuration files. Now let's talk about how does UPI handle such situations. Well, for this, we have to completely believe that NPCI is actually following the security best practices, guideline and procedures, etc. As a security professional, I got pretty much assured when I found that NPCI is compliant under PCI DSS, ISO 27001-2013 and ISO 22301-2012. Availability. Now this is about ensuring the availability of data to all the authorized users. Availability of UPI system can be compromised by DDoS attack. Now these attack can flood the UPI infrastructure with fake requests to prevent any genuine users from performing any kind of transactions. Ransomware attack. If attackers send a phishing email with a malware attached to it, once executed, it can move laterally and start encrypting all the important files and the system becomes unavailable. In such attacks, hacker asks for ransom amounts, usually in bitcoins. Now to understand the NPCI security infrastructure to mitigate such cyber attacks, I visited their official website and got to see almost everything needed to protect against such security incidents. All right, so that was huge. I tried covering every possible security factors in this video. Do let me know if I have missed anything. Finally, I can say one thing. NPCI is doing fabulous job in securing their UPI infrastructure. Let me know if you have any question. I would love to answer that. Thank you so much for watching.